joining us uh, for our city council budget meeting, uh, budget development meeting. We'll go ahead and get started. Ruth, could you please call the roll? Yes, sir. Adamson? She's, Adamson's been detained for a minute. She'll be here in just a few minutes. Okay. Here. Gina? Here. Johnston? Here. Lurick? Here. Anon? Here. Black? Here. Thank you. We'll move on to agenda item number two, fiscal year 2019 budget development. Uh, finance staff will provide information regarding fiscal year 2019 items for council budget decision making consideration. Ashley. Good afternoon. Ashley Welsh, senior accountant. So we are now at the point where we are trying to fill our gap from the things that we have added to the budget. So I'm going to kind of go over a few things before we get started. Um, we do have $275,000 in the budget for Palisades water revenue. It is a five-year option contract. We think we're in the third year of it, so we expect this to, to be in the budget and to receive it for FY19. So that is in there. Um, and where's that coming from? We've sold water to... We have not sold. We've leased water. Leased water. We've leased water to a number, couple different entities and... Um, if you remember, the first hundred thousand comes out of off the top and goes to the water department. The rest of what monies we get in from the leases come here, and that's what this represents is the two hundred seventy-five thousand. Are you locked fund. into that amount? Yes, right now. For, we're in that for those five years. We're passing on a million dollars. Worth twenty-five dollars an acre now. That's we're get, actually getting thirty thousand thirty dollars an acre, or twenty-seven or something. Is that how much? Fifty thousand acre feet. Well, not all of that's being leased. Why don't we lease the rest of it? That's well, a million and a quarter dollars. We, we, it sounds like a great idea. We lease everything that people want to lease from us. We have yet to say no. Well, but <laughs> we've so, had the opportunity to lease it in low water years. If we, if we deplete our resource, then we could be charged a surcharge the next year if it doesn't fill because we're a participant in both years. I don't know how to explain it, but we can be, we can get charges back to us because it doesn't fill. If it doesn't fill to the full, we can't lease all 50,000 acre feet because we only get credit for how much, if the, if the reservoir fills 90%, we get 90% of that 50,000 acre feet. And so we always have to have a buffer there and then we always keep a buffer for any mitigation that we may have to have uh, depending on the state water and what happens there and and uh, right now we we have negotiated some very very favorable leases for us with this because in the low water years it's expensive and the, when there's a lot of water like last year people were still paying us but it was because that was under the contract and it it cost them so it's a but but we do receive a penalty if we take yeah. all of our allotment and then the next year's a low water year we have to pay the based on what i've seen from the water meetings i've been in so far the demand for that water in palisades that pocatello owns is going to become very very valuable mm -hmm. it is very valuable even today we recognize that district 29 we're going to see i think a lot of applicants in this water district looking for a piece of that water in July and August. We do every year. So we'll, that will come in front of the council when, when we have opportunities and to say yes or no. So thank you, Ashley. You're welcome. We will move on. Um, these That's are the revenue well. estimates that we went over last week. Um, I feel really comfortable with those. I wouldn't, I mean, you could potentially take away or add to those. I would recommend leaving those the same. I think we had some good discussions on the revenue estimates. So you can see up here where our problem is. You can see, you know, um, the amounts in each of the funds. Um, and we did have a budget use of reserves in the airport fund of 79,500. So the 217 is what they're actually out, not including that 79.5, because they're actually gonna, use reserves for FY19. Okay. So when we um, look at the property taxes, I've included um, the 24 million in new construction, and that again is an estimate. We won't have new construction numbers until July 23rd. Um, so we're estimating the 24 million, it could be more or less than that, but that's what we're gonna build as of right now. And that um, equates to $272,000 about. 
Um, so that's already in there. With that in there, we have a gap of $323,246. I'm going to show you if we were to take the 3%, which is what we have done over the last couple of years, which is what a lot of cities do to keep up with potential growth. Um, if we put that in there, then we fill our gap, plus we have some additional money to add things to the budget as council sees fit. Now, everything here in green is what we have already added. The one thing that I know you guys wanted to talk about um, was the outside legal for the airport. We have, we paid about 70,000 so far. It looks like it's wrapping up. Um, so I, I would recommend maybe bringing that down a little bit. We did put 100,000 in and that was at the beginning of all of our budget meetings. So we could potentially probably drop it to around 50,000 I would say. If something happened and we had to pay more, we could either use reserves or we could use capital contingency money to pay for the additional legal fees that come up if that is an issue. But it looks like it's wrapping up. So that's something that you wanted me to bring back. And then a few, just a couple things. Um, these items here in yellow are things that were requested in the budget meetings, but we have not added them to the budget and they do have a tax impact to us. Um, one of the things that we didn't talk about was um, Family Services Alliance had written us a letter um, asking for an additional $5,500 contribution uh, for fiscal year 19. I didn't have that letter when I gave the non-departmental um, presentation, so I wanted to bring it to your attention now that they are asking for that. And also when I did the non-department um, budget meeting, the free clinic utilities, I guess for fiscal year 18, we are giving them a contribution amount. So they are paying for their own utilities now. So we don't, they, they haven't asked for an increase in that contribution. Um, when I was going through, I saw that, hey, if, you know, if we want to stay on budget, we need to increase it. But not knowing that in fiscal year 18, we kind of already solved that problem. So I just wanted you guys to know that this isn't a request from the free clinic. It was just something that I saw as a need. And then when I went back, I noticed that, hey, we're actually giving them, we're, they're paying it now and we're giving them a contribution. So we, we shouldn't go over budget anymore. I, um, on that item. So I just wanted to let you guys know that. So I guess the discussion comes to if we take the full 3%, what um, you would like to add to the budget. And remember this also, everything that we've included is in the green and we still have the 1.7 million in capital contingency for any capital projects that come up. We did go over the capital um, improvement projects last week. There were a couple that they're not in the budget that could use tax funds. I would recommend if you decide to do those projects to maybe take it out of that capital contingency dollars so that we take less for overall capital contingency, but the council saying, hey, we for sure want to do these projects. And I'll go over those really quick before we start discussion. We had the OK Ward Park restroom. And then after the meeting and talking with um, John Banks, he had requested the Ross Park pool resurfacing. I know he had talked about it during his um, department presentation. We had put it into 2020, but he said it's a it's a serious need for 2019. So I was just putting it in the tax solution so that you guys could um, make that decision. Then there's also the station one upgrade. And then there's the rainy Centennial Park and the sanitation lean twos that aren't in the budget, but they don't have a tax impact. Um, because they're funded through, sanitation is going to be through reserves and the rainy centennial is going to be through donations. So those are things that if you decided you wanted to put in the budget, we could put those in without any tax impact, as well as the ambulance. We're working with the ambulance on the contract. So these we will work with the county on, but I did just want to show you that these were the items that were requested by the ambulance department. Okay. So we are requesting all of those uh, ambulance things for the county? Yes, and they, Dave's been talking to them and they are going to have, they are going to increase the budget. So we're gonna go through and see exactly what we can put in there. But they'll work with us. That has nothing we, to do yep. with our It doesn't taxes affect our tax rate. It's, know, but, um, but, but we've gotta have it in there. So. Yeah, okay. so we will work on that. When, okay. when, when will we know what, that, what the county's gonna do with that? I think we have a pretty good idea as of right now. 
just today. So okay, can we make that public, or is it top I don't secret know. stuff? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Chief Gates, Pocatello Fire Department, Bannock County Ambulance. I spoke with Christy Klaus, Klauser with the county this morning, and she confirmed uh, 3 million four hundred and sixty-three thousand. and I'm going to have to do a little bit of 927 plus $8.3 thousand uh, additional. And, and basically that funds, um, we had some requests. Let me just quickly paraphrase uh, our current budget based on re uh, normal wage increases, retirement increases, be medical benefits, shop and oil, and some supply changes netted 61,000. We were asking for 272,000 in employee requests, and we were also asking for 50,000 in city administrative fee. Uh, the 151,000, roughly 160,000 that they're increasing our budget would cover the employee half of the operating uh, administrative fee this year and then the intention would go to be the other half next year plus the additional uh, budget uh, just increases that are due to wages and benefits and, and things like that. So we're basically looking at adding the um, firefighter to ambulance and part of the city administrative support fee, which will go to the general fund yes. um, to help. Right, right now we just, we allocate it and then ambulance just doesn't pay for it. So the general fund is a little bit short on the admin support. So this is gonna help to cover some of that cost. So are they, are they paying for the added uh, medical supplies? Uh, that was not going to be able to be covered. So that's out? So yes. it would just be the employee and part of the administrative support fee. The employee and part of this? Yep. And the plan would be in FY19 pick up the half of the administrative support fee and in FY20 we'd pick up the other half. So the ambulance will be paying a portion of the city's it's admin support fee. Two-thirds, one-third. So I think we'd get three. Okay. Okay. All right, thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. So I guess the discussion comes to what are we looking at for property taxes um, to see if there's things that we want to add into the budget or things that we want to maybe look at and talk about. Well, Council, what I would suggest, and this is me, and I'll throw this out there and then you can work on it from there. I would suggest taking the 3% if we're gonna keep up with what we're doing right now, you're gonna to have to take the 2% anyway. But I would consider the 3%, but then I would also look at hiring uh, the police, the two police officers, the dispatcher, and then looking at the, the probationary firefighter. I, I don't know what that those numbers are, but as I looked at this, there's some things, you know, there's some other things that you kind of need to look at and at least consider animal services, uh, medical uh, supply increases. That might be something that's, that's there. But those are some things that I would, I would look at probably preliminarily to see what we are. A dispatcher, two police officers, and, a, and, uh, and then if, if our fire were concerned about the overtime as much, and Chief Gates, you might have to, we need a pedometer on that guy. He's on our team. Yeah, hold on, is he on our team, Ann? Where's Ann? <laughs> Stop walking if you're not on our team. Come on up here. Um, you were talking about the having these other firefighters and that's going to help with our overtime issue. We yes, sir. Haven't been able, what kind of help is that gonna give us? Well, those are really hard numbers to actually wrap our heads around. Um, but they're easy to wrap the 143,000 around, <laughs> so I'm interested in. So uh, we're currently at 130% of our overtime budget right now this year. Um, the, the, the problem with estimating the exact impact is that as I look back historically, uh, two years ago, um, the fire had the worst impact to the overtime 
This year, the EMS system is actually having the worst impact of the overtime. Next year, I don't know what it will be. And, and so it really is very situational. I do our best as a department to allocate overtime costs to the cause. And if the cause is an, a shortage in an ambulance, then the ambulance district pays their share. If it's the cause is a transfer to Salt Lake in an ambulance, then the ambulance pays their share. If the cause is uh, training for ambulance service, then they pay for their overtime, if that makes sense. And so there's some things, but our driver in in overtime has always been, and it's about 60% of our total overtime budget is always uh, staffing. And, and so that 60% staffing is just who's sick? If, if an EMT, a, a, a paramedic, or an ambulance service person is the person that creates the vacancy, then they get charged the overtime. If the fire service, but in general, then that's why the two-thirds, one-third kind of ratio is because we have about two-thirds of our staff are fire personnel, and one-third of our staff is EMS personnel. And so, you know, mathematically, it should work out over time that the fire is going to absorb two-thirds of the overtime compared to the EMS, but it doesn't always work out that way. And what I've had to do is offset my over, my overtime, the shortfall in my overtime has always been offset by reducing operating budget. So I don't buy turnouts, I don't send people as much training as I probably should be sending them to, and that's how I have to, to, to come up with that number. So the reason I didn't try and offer some overtime offset to this is really because I'm I have underfunded my operating budget for the last three years and I really kind of need to catch up so by offsetting the overtime budget and saying okay well I'll reduce my overtime budget um, then I'm really not rebounding what I have underspent on my operating does that make sense and so I really could use the extra funds in my operating side to catch back up from the shortfall over the last couple of years of having to underfund my operating side, including equipment purchases that we haven't made, uh, training that we haven't attended, and things to that effect. Well, and, and I don't have a hard number. So. I'm gonna, and I'll just throw this out. There's 20 other departments that have also underfunded their operating, and they can also use the money too. And so, absolutely. So, well, so you know what we're we're looking at. So, yep. Anyway, that's. So just off of your recommendation, if you do the um, two police officers, two firefighters, and the dispatcher, you'd still have $171,000 remaining if you were to take the 3%. Just to uh, give you an idea. And I don't think that you can overlook family services. They save us a lot of money. Do they not, Chief? <laughs> <laughs> there was a definite yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that would be another 5,500 5, now. Council, I've just thrown that out there. You guys mm -hmm. take it away at this point. That's the family so services you just added. I can go to the planning. That put, I, would, I would recommend that. Planning technician. And the dispatch. Planning technician, I, I didn't look at the planning technician. I mean, I know we need it, and I know that we're excited about the growth. I, as I see it coming together, will we be pushed a little bit in planning? Absolutely, we will be. But I don't think we're gonna see 1,000 or 1,500 homes tomorrow or next year <coughs> being built up in the Northgate area. So I might be completely off. Melanie's going to be mad at me because I said that. But, <laughs> but I'm looking also at what's going to be important for us moving forward with our, I, I, I was looking at this more through an emergency services lens than anything probably. So that's, I mean, I'm really truly open for. And another thing that was brought to my attention is we do have the budget for an economic development manager in the budget currently. We only really have budget authority for the person and a tiny bit of operating. So basically, if you wanted to in fiscal year 19, or I mean in 18, I guess you could, it's already in the budget, hire for that position, they really don't have any money to work with. So that is something that you could think about adding also is giving them a little bit of operating room. Um, if that's something that is important to you, it is in the budget, but the operating part of it really isn't, so. Yeah. I'm also wondering about the animal services, um, at least the medical supplies part. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to 
get that in there, but I was visiting them the other day and, you know, they have this beautiful new facility, but they didn't get any more staff and I believe they even lost somebody. So um, it seems like they're, they could, they could use somebody. I'd like to at least consider that. Thoughts? <clears throat> I'm a little reluctant to go get the 3% because we are a highly taxed city. So we did take the 3% last year. Um, and when the valuations came in, it actually only ended up being a 1.5% increase to the levy rate. So that is something we don't have valuation numbers right now. Like I said, we will get the new construction and annexation on July 23rd. I think that we have to have final valuation numbers to us by August 6th, I want to say. So basically what we're looking at today is if we can make a decision for publication and then we can come back when we get those numbers and maybe look and see you know, what we feel comfortable with as far as the levy rate goes. If we plug this in with our new valuations that we're going off of and we are like, no, it is that 3% and we don't feel comfortable with that, we can always drop it down. But once we publish, we cannot go any higher than that. So if we decided today that we only wanted to take 1% and then our valuations came in high, it doesn't matter, we're stuck. So that's just something to remember too. So I think I think my recommendation would be definitely publish the three percent. But I think to Roger's point that we need to look and see what we're willing to cut at the yes. last minute because And so I would definitely anything that you're gonna add today, I I think we should rank it. Okay. Because if we come back so we're hoping that before the public hearing, we will have numbers. Mm -hmm. If we don't, we'll have a special meeting before you know the ordinance is passed. But I, um, if we have to cut things out at that point, I don't wanna have to have a huge discussion. So if we can discuss it today and come to a consensus of, okay, this is the ranking of how we want to keep things, then I think that that would be definitely something that would be helpful. When did you say the county's supposed to have the actual numbers to it? I'm pretty sure it's August 6th. August 6th? And our public hearing is August 2nd. We did have them August 1st of last year, so. So I'm looking, if our public hearing's August 2nd, we get the real numbers the 6th. I think they have to be to us by the 6th, yeah. So we can have a special meeting in between the, on the ninth, mm -hmm. to give a little, I, I just am uncomfortable putting the council in the position of on the night of a public hearing saying we want these pulled out and then having an ordinance written. I mean, I know our attorney's good, but he'll be up here writing an ordinance that we're <laughs> doing it. And so, fill in the blanks. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, if we, so if we have an opportunity that we can, have the meeting on the 9th to give a little bit more directions on how to how to write the ordinance for the 16th thing. Yeah, for sure. Then yeah, I feel a little bit better about that, and that's that would give us the... Yeah, I would definitely way. recommend having another meeting once we get those valuation numbers, just to make sure that everybody's comfortable with what that levy rate looks like at that time. Well, I'm just saying that because I think people shop taxes just like they do other things and they look for the best value and uh, I think our taxes are up there where people don't want to buy a house or don't want to invest in Pocatello because they don't have to pay as much somewhere else. Well and our tax rate is higher but we are in kind of a unique community where we do have a lot of tax exempt property here. Well, I know that but people don't worry about that. Right. <laughs> we can explain it. Right. But they say bottom line for me is whether I want to invest in this community. Yep. And so I think we have to be able to provide, you know, our community with the best services that we can so that they can see the value in what they're paying. I feel good about taking the 3%. Uh, and I'm really excited about the dispatcher and the firefighters and the police officers. I, I think we're going in the right direction. If I were to put a, a if, if we're putting a number on them, I would probably put the uh, one on the police officers, yeah. a two on the dispatcher, a three on the firefighters, and then I would put family services and then, and then animal services. 
the medical supplies. The medical supplies, the medical yeah. Supplies, right. So I love what Family Services Alliance does for our community, and I totally support them. I'm just wondering if that, if, if we think that's number four, or if, I mean, because we have some other things that we really need as well, so. I'm well, our, our animal shelter is way over uh, functioning <laughs> for what, what we expected it to be at this point. And uh, if we don't finance some of the efficiencies out there, uh, we're understaffed. We got we got to finance some efficiencies in other ways to help them save money. And the medical supplies is a big part of that new mm -hmm. operating room that will save money in other areas. So I I would put it. I thought I had a family service. I'm, I'm, everybody's being cut, and uh, we may have to make some hard decisions. Come. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Evaluation. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, yeah. I agree they're small, so I would be agree with those. I'll go with purchase. So you guys are looking at the medical supplies increased? I'm, I'm going to put that up both. there. Yeah. I'm going to put it up there on the list, higher than the <clears throat> family service. For medical supplies? Mm -hmm. So we're having a discussion here. There's, if we took the three percent, there's still with those. Oh, add the the medical supplies then. Okay. And the family services. So we'll just go this way. I have a question on the on the support specialist for the police. Can, what is that one for? Can somebody? It's a stand all right, Chief. You want to come up here or? or Major Peterson. I got to tell you, the chief has been out working today. He's been on the street That's working, scary, isn't it? working the street today. So yeah. Did you need a support specialist there? <laughs> well, we had, I think we, I think we had two listed on there, right? One is uh, records is the first one, and then the stenographer. So the, you know, as we build it, we need that civilian staff to. Okay. take care of typing the reports and then all our records so that's what we were looking at there to build that part of the staff also okay. were these in opposite order like oh no they're not they they weren't in order of your preference right no that's because i remember you told us when right, it, when we had the meeting before but which one was higher on your list support specialist or stenographer well, the way our world is going right now, I would say stenographer. That's somebody that's taking care of all our reports. Um, and we're generating a lot more reports right now. Uh, and without those reports, records can't do their job, basically, because those reports are going in there. They're coding them, taking care of all of that for the state. So if, if I had to choose right now between those two, that's where I would go. Stenographer. Yes. And then I'll go over and the major will tell me we should, probably should have went the other way. <laughs> <laughs> so I kind of want to ask our human resources, but I don't know if she'll be mad at me. If, if there's from a personnel perspective, if there's really one that we haven't said yet that we're just really going to be in trouble if we don't Thank you. add. <laughs> Heather Buchanan, Human Resources Director. Um, you've actually staffed what I would have asked you to staff this year. Um, I know the Parks Department is stretched pretty thin. If you could throw money at one of the positions they're requesting, they're not full-time positions. It is mostly seasonal help to make them get through their high season. It would be nice to see some funding there. Which would you rank highest? We were, we, it's funny you yeah. mentioned that. We were just, just pointing, pointing out the, those, the parks there. So. With code enforcement? And I think Parks has done a great job of trying to be reasonable instead of, you know, high dollar amounts trying to bring in some parks minimal amount of help that they need yeah what they yeah. ask for this year they're trying to make sure that you know they're not bringing unreasonable requests i'm not sure which one john would say was more important so can i answer yeah that? please um i i would I, I know it's more money but i would say the the greenway trails workers would be the most crucial code code enforcement it's 
can be a little bit hit or miss. It, is, it does take a lot of the park supervisor's time, but you know, you could have a year where it doesn't take as much time, where we've got 15 plus miles and 20 plus million dollars of improved trails and really trying to kind of piecemeal it on Fridays if we have an extra two hours with one guy type of thing. It's, I, that would be the biggest need to kind of maintain that amenity for the community. I think we need to include that also. So if you included all of them, you're looking at 33,000, right? I, if you're gonna, if we're gonna staff the economic development position this year, I do ask that you put a chunk of operating budget in for them. I mean, they need, they need an office, they're gonna need a cell phone, they need a big travel budget. I'm not sure where we sit with a car on that type of position. That is an expensive position to fund. I know you guys have been very eager to start looking at that. This would be the place to throw that chunk of money. And what chunk are we looking at? Really, you want me to answer that one? <laughs> well, if, if I were to interject here, I think we were looking, I don't know what the amount was we set aside for the, the person. We funded the position and the benefits. And I think that was one, 25, 150. Okay, last year when we initially did it, the plan was that we would put about half of that out in salary. It'd be a mid-year staffing. Be, and the other half would be available for the things you're talking yeah. about. So. I, I would say you're, you're looking at probably a minimum of a $50,000 budget this year to get their feet underneath them, to get the equipment, like the laptop, the phone. I mean, that's just to get them settled. They do need a little bit nicer office. I mean. They need a space that looks presentable, not kind of just crammed in a corner. There are considerations there that you don't see with like a normal department head. I, I know it sounds kind of ridiculous, but it is the person that's representing the city to business, so it needs to be a little spiffier. So we don't even have that on there, so we would need actually yeah, we to need add to line that it in. down. So we could take this conference real quick. <clears throat> We're going to have to re renovate that anyway as we're moving forward with what we've talked about. Okay. So where are we if we add those in, Ashley? You add the park stuff in, Ashley. Where you are we want at? all the park stuff? Yeah, why not? We can take it out, right? I mean, That's yeah. That's the idea. I'm just, I'm trying to get you the answer on that economic development position really quick, so give me just one second. Chief, if you'd go ahead and just reach over there and just add those things into the other one real quick. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little bit of money. But... Yeah. I'm not going to find it there. You're okay, Ashley. Just... <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Can we work so fast? How many stenographers do we have right now? Five. Five. How many support specialists? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. I think there's six in records. Right. So you're five, down to 74,000. Five stenographers, six in records. Okay. But one way or another, we're going to have to start to grow, grow them in over the next few years. However it goes today, I mean, our, our requests basically are going to continue to be the same over the next Ten years, probably until we, until we get those positions filled. Um, okay. So you're down to seventy-four thousand. So this is if we were to add all the parks and recreation positions plus a fifty thousand dollar operating budget for the economic development position. And we have animal services, medical supplies. Yes. That includes the medical supplies, yes. And family services, the lines. If, okay. if you look up there on the board in front of us, everything on the right hand <laughs> side there's been added. Okay. Um, but we haven't got the stenographer in there. Let's right, that's not on there. Throw it up there. Throw the stenographer on there. What the heck? Just throw them in here. I got things if you're just throwing money. <laughs> you're not just throwing money. <laughs> hey, you're not on that list. You don't. <laughs> Down to ten thousand dollars. And I, I mean, you could put that into capital contingency, yeah. or I mean, there are some smaller things in here. Knockbox. But that that knockbox system. Yeah. They would take care of the rest of it. Right. Yeah. Let's not just try to like. <laughs> right. <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> Right. <laughs> 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 and it doesn't go over. 
So what do you want to take out of there? No. Take the firefighters out of there and you got all kinds of stuff. Very comment. Is it okay if I speak now? Please. Um, I, uh, if you guys were, were so gracious to allow us the trails workers, I, I um, feel a little bit greedy here. I think we can, we'll continue to sprit, stretch with the code enforcement system. If that helps out in another area, you guys are being very generous. Marks, he has been greedy, hasn't he? He's got everything up there. <laughs> Scott, <laughs> swallow it. Those trails workers will, will help us out tremendously. So you're talking about the groomer operator trails and no, the greenway the trails. So take out the code enforcement and let's see what happens. Gives us the next. Opinion. Gives us another. Yeah, we're back up to fifteen thousand. You're feeling better already, aren't you? <laughs> what about? <the> <laughs> I think with the emphasis we talked about increasing abatement, we need that code enforcement first. I think so too. I, well, yeah, I think so. But. Let's put it back in. She's spending money again. Let's add it. She looks nervous doing it. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we have budgeted about $7,500 for um, economic development. That's it. Not counting the 7,500 or 75,000? 7,500. 100. For operating, yes. Like yes. For their supplies. Yes. So that, so that was what was basically left over after the council <clears throat> said we will be willing to spend this much. We graded the position, we added the benefits, and that was the leftover amount. So we put it into travel and training just as a placeholder for it. So but just so could, you know, that's how much is in there. Are we so we can that take that 7,500 off to 50,000? Yeah. Is that what you're implying? It, or, that's what she said. or add it to it. That's not my <laughs> I mean, it's, I'm it's not sure there. what the operating budget. We, we can make the fifty like. thousand. We can reduce the forty to forty-three five, or forty-two five. But you said fifty was a minimum too. Yeah, that so. was where I would. If you asked me to budget it this year, that's where I would say you should start. Well, <laughs> but well, we are doing that because we got the seventy-five hundred there already. Yes, you are. And Assuming the, we can get that. The other thing that, that we haven't looked that's at. The, that's part of the problem is the recruiting right now is very tough for management positions. When we're going up against bigger cities, paying a lot more than us, sometimes I have to move them up higher in the pay scale than we anticipated to get what we want. So that 7,500 could very easily go towards salary. Well, if you get a good person, they sell themselves. I would reduce that. that <laughs> nope, they don't. They ask for more. <laughs> Two twenty-five. I would five. reduce it to seventy-five thousand. Not. Yeah, I was gonna say we should probably look at the outside legal for airport. I would look at dropping that. So if we if, if we think, took twenty-five thousand, then you can see we have. Yeah. They do see this. Can we, we're having a question. How much do we currently give Family Services Alliance? I know this is just an increase. We give them fourteen thousand five hundred. So they're so asking for twenty. They wanted to come to twenty. Yeah. Okay. That's right. Got our number twenty. So if we drop the the hundred thousand dollar legal uh, money out of the, the airport to seventy five thousand dollars, our gap. We have now forty two thousand. And I think that seventy five is more than it probably enough. is. But that's your decision to make as to what you want to budget for that. Council, what do you think? Fifty or seventy five? If if we drop that down enough, could we then consider the animal services care specialist? That's 50. Uh, do, you, do you know what I would, I would probably look at something else rather than the animal care specialist. Although I recognize we probably need it. There's some other things in here that might be more, be as important anyway. A animal services, okay. they have talked about changing kind of their model for management. So I'm not sure they have a defined organizational structure that they would present to you as kind of a final product. They're kind of in the process of that. So we so should wait it out. I think waiting a year on that one, I mean, they already perform phenomenally. You're giving them the medical. I would like to say just give them the position, but I think that's one of the departments you need to look at the long-term structure of. Okay, that's fair. 
What's the consensus on the legal level? I think 75. I don't know. They've asked for it. Something. Give them three. 75. We're looking at other things to see. Right. But what's 75 or you said 60 on the legal? What's the consensus so we've on that? spent around between 70 75 and that was when we were really working a lot on it. We, so and you think it's so going the down. reason they think, think it's dropping it's, out uh, with the, we, the reason we think it's dropping out is because Congress passed the uh, a bill that will help us with that and it's in front of the Senate either this week or the first of next week. And we believe that the Senate's probably going to pass that too. If they do, then that will definitely reduce that number, probably below 50. But well, would we be safe with 60? We'd be safe with 50. Probably. Well, if we, we're safe yeah, with 50, I mean, then maybe we there is reserves. They do have a little bit of excess reserves that they could use. And there's also capital contingency dollars if something came up and we had to pay a big legal fee that we... We could probably use. Then I'd say go 50. Yeah. Okay, go 50. Yeah. <laughs> I'll go back down here. So, so the thought process here, I, I was just told like Family Services Alliance, uh, if we didn't do the 5,500, we did 2,500. So, Chief, you have indicated that we have a real need for officers, so obviously we want to get you the two. Would you would you put your support specialist over a third officer, or would you throw a third officer into that mix? Mm -hmm. Well, it's kind of like I explained to you that the other day, we're down. We're really down about eight. We should be at 99, we're at 91. Um, if you're looking at numbers right now, I'm gonna tell you our, our, our call numbers have gone up immensely. Um, but I think I need to balance it a little bit. If, if this is where we're at, if you look at me and said, I'll give you eight policemen and not a records clerk or a, a steno, I would probably have to pare it down a little bit. We've, we've gone so long with so little, I guess, is part of it. So I'm, I don't want to be greedy, but I want to be greedy. I'm just trying to balance it out. And I know as I bring these policemen on, it's going to generate more work because the call volume's there. And, and I don't want to say I want all these policemen and I don't have anybody to support them. So I want to take the su support staff with them and then continue to fight for more policemen every year. Uh, as we go, and I can bring you the numbers. So you'd probably stick with the two and go with the record specialist? No, with uh, the with support the stenographer. specialist? The yeah. stenographer, Another sorry. Stenographer. Yeah. What's that? Two stenographers. Right. Well, if you're going to give me two, I'll take one. Them. Just one. 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 No, one's one. on our request is one it's stenographer, one, one records clerk. Right. Right. If I could get them both, that, that kind of levels me out for a while. And, and the thing is, is if I get a stenographer and a records clerk, which is being way greedy, I'm probably not asking for them again next year. Then it just is going to come down to policemen. Um, and I have to be able to look at it and be able to come to you and bring you the numbers. Right now, I can tell you they're overrun. We're overrun on day shift. I don't know what's going on right now, but those guys on days is usually they don't start working hard till about 10. Right now, seven o'clock in the morning, we lose a whole crew. It's just, I don't know what's going on. That's full moon or something. But, so that's kind of, we as we looked at it, we just wanted to level it all out. Um, if we if we got both the stenographer and the records clerk, that's not an every year deal. We're not going to come back every year and say I need two policemen, and I need another stenographer and another records clerk. Um, that's going to level that out for probably five to six years. And in that time, I'm hoping if I got two policemen a year, right now I'm, I'm still going to be behind. But six seven years from now, the next chief's going to come in and say I need more support staff. So. so he'd take the support staff over the officer? No. The third no. officer? Oh, yes, over the third <laughs> yeah. officer. Yeah. So if we could do two officers and one stenographer rather than three officers, that would be... Yeah, I think that's probably the smart way to do it. It just levels it out. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what we have up there now, right? 
We don't have the stenographer. We don't have, we have, the, this, we we have, have the stenographer. We don't have the stenographer. We don't have the record specialist. Yes. We don't have the stenographer. So, so, Chief, it's an unfair question I'm going to have to ask here, but i got to ask. Um, two probationary firefighters, if we do away with those and add police officers. I don't you, <laughs> you know what? You know what? He's been successful the first time he's been speechless. You, you know what? You know what? <laughs> I'm you know, sorry, Chief. I'm just joking there. You know what my answer sorry. is, but I... I, I yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, you just trying to start a fight? I, I was just... <laughs> I just wanted to see what he would do. I'm not suggesting we pull him out, but he, he was speechless. I've Gee, never seen him speechless. to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> the paramedics aren't coming. Yeah. <laughs> All coming. right. <laughs> okay, thanks, Chief. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Chief Melanie and Chief Gates are both mad at me now, so... <laughs> I think that looks pretty good to me. Do you, do you want to add a support specialist or do you want to hold off on that support specialist right now and kind of leave it where it is? I mean, we were putting things in there, might as well and go. <laughs> I think the police department needs all the help we can do. So add that. So you'd basically be done at that point, and then I would recommend we go back through and rank the rest of what we put in there. <laughs> Before we do that, though, Roger, what does that look like to you? Are you comfortable with that, if assuming everything goes as planned? I'm comfortable with where we are right now. What is this? So, okay. Bina? Jim? That is amazing. I think we don't I, I think we've made some okay. real progress there. Rick? I'd like to have seen more in planning. I think the next year, that's going to get real important for us. I would agree. I, I, I police is my first priority. I would agree. Planning is probably where we need to, need to focus quite a bit next year, for sure. We'll have a little bit more idea of what's going to happen. If I got a question. Yes. If planning becomes real active and we collect much more in uh, revenue, we could allocate that money for a planner. For a planner, we could. Right. Or you could, you could use capital contingency dollars for that first year, and then you mm -hmm. would put it in the next year's operating okay. budget. Like if yeah, if something came up and you're you know you desperately needed this, we could move the budget authority from capital contingency to planning for that first year, and then because we did that with street. Um, we gave them some additional money for the first year, and then we just added it into their budget for previous fiscal years. So that is an option also. So um, what I'm thinking, and we, we got like a million dollars out of Hoku, didn't we, for all the fees for planning and, and building and all that. Yeah, so if we had a big pro what, where do what, where does that revenue go? Uh, does it just go into a certain account? and? We wait till the. It is. It all goes to the general fund. I think okay. the big money makers probably going to be in building permits, mm -hmm. not in planning fees. Well, but I'm saying that there are fees that we charge. But yes. And if we really get busy. Yep. Then we are producing revenue that should generate a coverage for that and extra we, activity. And we could do a budget amendment and say, hey, we have all this excess revenue because of cool. all these additional developments that are, that are coming in and we could use that to fund a position so also. there is a mechanism there mm -hmm. uh, yep to okay. it after. yeah i think we could get it after a mid-year if we needed to it sounds yeah. like if yeah if something there's, there's a few options and we could go to contingency at any time and then backfill it yeah. with the budget yep. amendment. absolutely yeah there's a few options because there, there there really is a opportunity for that to blow up on in our face and there's an opportunity for it to not be an issue at all my concern is it's a tail chase and wagging the dog. We're, we're chasing development, we aren't planning it. Yeah. Linda, how are you on this group here? I'm pretty comfortable with this. Um, I guess 
I mean, there's tough choices. They're all important, but I think my top two priorities were personnel for police and fire, and we've got that, so I'm happy. Um, and I would have liked to see more for animal services, but if, if we can look at that seriously next year, I think I'd be good with that, and I think they'd be good with that. Um, planning is a potential issue. One minor thing that I might suggest is is going back to the full amount for family services. I, that's the one thing I was going to say is family services, I'd like to see more. It's $2,500, um, and they do yeah. a lot. Um, so if you put that in there, I mean, you're still... It's pretty tight, though. I guess it's all theory right now anyway until we have real numbers. Well, I mean, we have the real, we know what we can take in taxes besides the new construction. Yeah, we have, we can, we can take we can the 861, take it. Yeah. yeah. We can cover that. We can, we'll, we will definitely be able to cover it with what, from, we're just using old numbers. And, and that, the, the only thing that, was the 3%. The only thing that could make that come down is if your new construction came in at 20 million instead of 24. You might have to. And then, or, you know, depending on valuations, how you feel comfortable with the levy rate, so. Well, this is right now just a plan. Yes, it, so that we can budget. It, it's it's a, an and expense publish. plan. Mm -hmm. Until we really know our revenue, we will not know what we're gonna spend, for sure. Yeah. Right, and that's why um, I think ranking them will help us if you know yeah. something happens when we have that special meeting that we can work through a lot faster. Mm -hmm. So, so if you're looking for a ranking, I would keep like one, two, three, four where it's at. Then I'd go parks, five, six, five. seven, eight on parks. the parks ones, and then I'd put the police um, stenographer and support specialist up there near the top. Also, what about your economic development? Oh. The budget yeah plan. that would be five right yes. we have to put yeah. that up there one too. two three four five, five. is the economic five. development yeah operations yeah and then and the then trails yeah. six and and seven. Is six. i would do six on the steno i thought and then go from there or either or you do six on the steno okay that's fine yes yeah. you guys okay with that yeah and we can cha we can change it. I just wanted to have kind of a plan. Yeah, so that let's go six on that, six and then down. seven on Greenway Trails workers. Eight on the Groomer Trail. Right. Just give everything in seven. Eight there. <laughs> put eight because we won't know. And then I would put the code enforcement nine, and then ten. And then eleven. And then eleven specialist. No police support oh. specialist. Oh, 11. sorry. And then they I, knew I was forgetting something. Okay. Yeah. And I don't. I'm just wondering. Do we really need to go the full 5,500? Because I would think they would just be happy we, to have an increase, uh, and maybe we could then look at it in future no, years. So on that note, I have another question. So CDBG is also funding parts of family service, or is this part of CDBG that goes to? This is separate. This, this is, separate. is separate. Yeah. Okay. So, so I don't, I don't remember what that letter of request said and what they would use this for. I think, it, or if that, it was just a, an ask for an extra fifty. It was an ask for an additional money. So thanking was, the council for all, everything that they. If it was just an ask, then you can put any number on there or none at all, for that matter. Um, I know that I know Family Services Alliance really truly puts our police officers back on the streets when there's a domestic issue. Mm -hmm. the, our police officers call them; they go in and they help an awful lot on that. And it probably frees a police officer up 45 minutes to an hour earlier than you would typically have. And so, when that's the case, that's a pretty pretty significant throughout the year. And so, so what I can do is I can um, put this in the budget. We will publish based on this amount, and then when we get um, our evaluations, we can schedule a special meeting to go over, you know, all of this again and just kind of see where we're sitting as far as the levy rate and everything else goes. If you're comfortable with that. 
Council, would you like her to do that and give us a new sheet here and then you can look at it? Are we meeting? We're meeting again on the 26th, right? We don't have to meet on the 28th if we've made a decision unless you want to. Hey. I can. Would you, would you like her to do that and get us all another one of these sheets? I mean, I can so update the sheet. Yeah, I can email I'd, I'd it. I'd like to get a review. Um, I just throw the 2815 back down on the uh, operating budget for the. When you're, they're near zero. I like yeah. the clean, the clean zero. Clean <laughs> zero. Round up numbers. Yeah. And, uh, round down. It's not going to stay. And then. Uh, it's never will. It that makes way, me smile for recruiting. Well, well and that uh, just allows us uh, to be kind of finished for today and until we get other numbers. And then the only other thing I did want to bring up was the capital, where we are trying to put a capital plan in place. Was there anything specifically that you would like to see in this year's budget, or would you like, mostly for the tax impact, would you like them to come before you and ask for capital contingency dollars for FY19? So this would basically be a wash. So we would decrease capital contingency and just apply it to these specific projects for FY19. I think so we would be taking from what, what's existing, there would be zero impact. There's yes. A, there's no really tax impact because of what? Because of the, because I would the put the Ross Park uh, resurfacing. Pool resurfacing. Yes. And this is just to kind of create a plan to say we are for sure going to do this. Right. So I, I just, we wanted to try to be looking forward. So. so so look at the Ross, put the Ross Park pool resurfacing. So what I'll do is I'll put this in um, recreations budget. It shouldn't create a gap. I don't know what my formula must be. Well, you've got to take that well, amount out of the <laughs> other. So I would do a minus. Yeah, 15. There we go. So there you'd be zero. Um, and then these that have no tax impact, would you like to put them in or would you like them to come and ask them as if as an as needed. Remind me what the rainy Centennial Park. They're doing the, like the um, engineering and stuff and the planning. So they're looking for, do they're getting donations. So yeah. this will be paid for by donations. And if they don't, then it doesn't. If get they don't, they don't. So I think then you need to put it in. Yeah. You need to put that in. This buzzing here. If we got them this year? Yeah, like in September. If we were able to spend them in FY18, we would do a budget amendment to do that, and then we could hold back this hundred thousand dollars for 19 and not let it be it. It would not be available to be spent. What if and we got the money but we didn't spend it? What do we have to do? If it's in the budget for FY19, you don't have to do anything. So it's donations, and I know that they're working on the donations and they're they're getting some donations now and the city is going to be the fiscal um, manager of this project right. if they if somebody were to donate a hundred thousand dollars tomorrow but we didn't start working on it until october yeah if you put it in the budget right now you it would be done you wouldn't have to do anything if you don't put it in the budget you would have to do a budget amendment in fiscal okay. year 19 to spend that. Okay. Yeah. So put that on there. I would put that on there. I mean, we can we can do a hold, a hold back to make sure that it doesn't get spent until the donations are there. Yeah. Um, that definitely. Is I would an I would put that on there, and I think that I think that the lean yeah. to is Bring extremely to important because I think you're going to have some lines. damage on those the trucks, mm -hmm. the is sanitation the trucks on that new property. I don't know what the rest of the council feels like about that. From our discussion last week, mm -hmm. I think that's very important. And yeah, this again, this one's a no tax impact also because they're using reserves, but it isn't in their budget I'll right put now. It in. Put that in there too. The lean twos. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's a lot better to spend money like that than it is pulling people out and making people upset at you. Well, and from when, I mean, this is, I think this is my fourth budget year. This year was a lot. I mean, it seems to get better every year. So I really appreciate your guys' hard work and trying to make this process a lot easier. Um, it's, it's way nicer to come in and say, what can we give than what do we have to take away? So it's been really nice working through that. Thank you, Ashley, for your work. Yeah. This is, it's, 
you and Joyce have done an incredible job over the last few years, and so make sure Joyce knows. She's probably watching. I'm right sure now. she's watching right now. I don't know what she's camera's on us right now. Yeah, she's taking notes. And she's probably sent everybody in the city a text that she has a thing on to saying stuff, but. <laughs> But she is, yeah. uh, you guys, it's amazing what you've been able to accomplish. And so thank you very much for the, the work. It is a lot easier to find this kind of a, a thing than to have to figure out how to cut yeah. $8 million. Yeah. So. But we did it. We did it. We kept the $8 million once. Yeah. yeah. As hard as it was. It's not easy. Okay. Council, anything else? Any other direction? What about those other items that are requested not yeah. in budget with no tax impact? Yeah, what about those? So these are ambulance. So there's, um, like Dave said, we're going to add in. They, they agreed to fund the position and part of this administrative support fee so that we don't really need to do anything with. I just wanted you guys to see that the, the overall budget will be impacted by those. But there yeah. isn't anything. I mean, the county pays for it, so it's not like we can go in and say we want to add it. What about the other items that uh, do have a tax impact? What about uh, the station one upgrade? The, so those are the capital improvement items that you can either choose to do or if you're not feeling quite comfortable with them, they can always come and ask for capital contingency dollars in the okay. next fiscal year. I think that's what I would okay. suggest is we have them do that. How much do we have left in this year's capital contingency? So in this year's, for fiscal year 18, I think we're around 600 to 650,000. Um, we do have about 280,000 left over from fiscal 17. So there is some capital contingency money available. So we, we could solve some of this. Yes. Later. When, yeah. Yeah. We could, yes, and yeah. the, the plan is any capital not spent at the end of this fiscal year will go into a capital savings so that we can keep that as capital and use it for one-time projects that we need it for so that we can continually be building that balance and be able to take care of our capital, which we haven't been able to do in the past. So We're just starting to it, it doesn't just go, it doesn't just go away. Yeah. We, mm -hmm. we are moving it and keeping track of that so that we can continue to use those funds for capital. Ashley, what do you, do you need any direction on the additional request items in budget, no tax in, uh, impact, no. those things, the blue section? <coughs> no, those are already in the budget. Those are already in the budget. They just, they, I put them in a separate section because I wanted you guys to understand that if we took them out, it wasn't going to do anything for your problem because they're either covered by reserves or additional revenues okay. that are coming in. Okay, perfect. Okay. <coughs> Any other questions? Yeah. Sure. Other questions, Councilor? Are we good where we are now, or are we Looks great. want to change things around, move things, anything else? Yeah, it's good. Good. I've got great job, everyone. Good vibes, except for the one on the very far right down there. I don't know what good. he's thinking. Good. He's good. <laughs> we'll go back to here. <laughs> Yeah, we're good. So let's okay. build that. If you would, though, do a new one of these for the council. We'll put it in their box. They can come look at it and be thinking about it. Doesn't sound like we need a meeting on the 28th. Do you want me to email it to you? Yeah. Put it in your box. Oh, yeah. you want to email? Or? I'd like to email. Yeah, email. And then you can get them. I mean, what's convenient for you? Email, right? I can email it to you. It would be yeah. easier. I'd like to get some wants of this stuff in emails because then I can play with it. Yeah, yeah. no, that's fine. I can email it to you. I'll. Or if it's in my box, that's it. Yeah. yeah. And we just did a motion for a, an effort to get more data available. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, I will email it to you. Thank you. So, okay. Well, that sounds great. Okay, thank you then. Thank you, Council, for your work and for the work with the study session and the budget. I do think this is a good solid. I, I think we just get more and more sustainable as we move forward. So thank you very much. With that, we are adjourned.